Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, this is Paul Cramey. Uh, welcome to our session uh, today and then um, follow up on Thursday. Today, we're going to talk about um, workflow and uh, how statuses and, and stations fit into that, uh, that whole notion. Um, so we'll start off with uh, just looking at uh, managing the business with statuses and stations learning how life cycle of estimates and orders, um, understanding the effect of statuses on the financials, um, and then just some uh, production or project management workflow considerations. Thursday, um, we're gonna flip gears and kind of take some of the concepts, so to speak, that we uh, covered today and fold that into how it pertains and of use uh, using the the uh, mobile uh, production app. Uh, today's going to be kind of a full day. We might run a little bit long. Um, uh, depends if we have a lot of questions. Uh, there's one there's one handout that is posted today. Uh, yours truly, you know, once you do a final review, you always think of something else. So there are three more. Um, handouts that I will be showing you and referencing today. And since they are not posted on the webinar itself, uh, following the webinar, Linda will uh, email everyone that was that attended. Uh, she'll email the set of um, of um, uh, of handouts that I'll be that I'll be using uh, for our discussion today. So with that said, I'm going to switch over to control. Um, so that we can get started. So just to kind of begin, um, we're we're talking about business with the whole notion of the features and control of statuses and stations, how they work together, because those two really help with the whole production process. So the life cycle, if you think of a life cycle as the beginning and the end of estimates, that takes uh, time, uh, it takes multiple steps generally, and it may uh, take multiple um, uh, either hours or, or even days to, uh, to occur. So the, as I said, the life cycle of an estimate from the time that it's requested and created until hopefully it gets converted or it comes to a, you know, to a to an end that could be minutes or it could be days in length. Orders, on the other hand, generally will have a longer lifespan uh, from the time that the order gets created. Generally, that's going to be maybe on the low side in terms of hours, but it could extend into uh, into weeks. Um, so what are the typical steps then to create an estimate? Well, estimate involves uh, many, many processes. Um, so you're going to simply by getting a request from my customer. You're going to work with that customer to make sure that you understand the, uh, you know, the requirements and including any optional things that they want to be included. And then you're going to hopefully, after that is all done, hopefully you're going to create um, um, and that uh, an estimate for that meeting those requirements. You're likely going to review that with the customer, um, and ultimately after that review, you're going to get a go or a no go, you know, from the customer. So completing the life cycle, then you're going to either convert it to an order, hopefully. The second thing that might happen is that you're gonna mark it as lost. And the lost means that the customer has probably advised you that they're not moving forward for one of a multitude of reasons. And the third and last final step in the, in the life of an estimate would be if you mark it as, a, um, as voided. And that's generally where you take the initiative 
uh, after repeatedly trying to, you know, communicate with the customer and find out what their decision is, if they're going to move forward or if they have questions, et cetera, et cetera. And you, you, you just see that that's not likely going to happen. So then you would mark it as voided um, with, a, with an appropriate reason. Now, for estimates, the reason for either voiding or marking it as lost also think of those as a station because that's in effect what they are what they are even though when you are doing one of those two tasks you're choosing a reason out of a list but that is being used by the system then as a um, <clears throat> as a station now the beginning um, a beginning and order involves also involves many steps probably more steps than than what a uh, than what an estimate does. So you're going to get a request from a customer. Um, you're going to gather the requirements from that customer. You're going to create a, uh, an, an order in control. Uh, you're going to review the requirements with the uh, customer to make sure that you've got clear, everything clearly understood. And they may make a They may make a, a deposit uh, on that order right away, and that's going to have some financial implications. Um, then you may go into where you're going to be doing some design work, maybe up front of the actual work beginning. And then you may have to some to some orders that are, or materials that you need to order. So you will do that. That's kind of also may be kind of a pre uh, production, so to speak, uh, uh, process. Then you're going to begin executing or performing perhaps many, many different steps, production related steps. You might be in printing, you might be doing some vinyl work, you might be doing some uh, channel letter work, you might be doing some screen printing work, and on and on and on. So there's a likely going to be a, a fairly wide set of steps or processes that are related to the production process itself. You may end up voiding uh, either a portion of an order during some of that period, or you may, um, um, you know, it just get them finished up and they're, they're ready to go. Now, after the production work is done, maybe all together or maybe in, in, uh, in, um, in pieces, then you may go into some uh, finishing work. That finishing might consist of doing some service related work, it might be doing some um, installation related work. And then in addition to that, you may run it through, and I'm not necessarily talking about these in particular order, but you may wanna do some quality control, uh, make sure that everything is done as it was supposed to be. And then when you're getting towards the end, you're going to be completing the order. Um, and that's when you're going to transfer control or transfer ownership is a better term. You're going to transfer ownership of that order from you, from the business to clients. And then that thing is going to be marked as complete. And then at the order level, then it, things would be, you would, would have reached the end of the life cycle. So the life cycle then of estimates and orders are managed by statuses and stations in combination with each other. Uh, statuses are static for orders and static for, for estimates. In other words, they're predefined estimates or uh, yeah, pending. Uh, converted, voided, closed, or I'm sorry, lost. Orders are work in process, built, sale, closed, and voided. So the, the statuses are predefined in control, but then you can design or create stations that will kind of match what your production workflow is going to uh, is going to require, and there is no one size fits all as far as what those stations should be. 
Um, it, a lot, there are a lot of variables that you would want to take into account uh, in deciding what what should my workflow look like. How detailed do I need to set that up for management purposes? And one of the handouts that I'll uh, sh uh, share with you that you can use as an FYI or uh, however it might be helpful to kind of help you get a flavor of what your flow might might look like. So now, if we um, if we go into control and go to production and then production setup and over here in column one that's where the stations are defined <clears throat> now there are four different kinds of stations they're at the order level at the estimate level at the line item level the time clock related and then production terminal and production cloud app. These more focus will be folks uh, today, we'll, we'll talking about it uh, and on Thursday, the production cloud app. So a station can be associated with multiple combinations. So it could be involved with uh, this particular one called pre-production. I said is it's related to the work in process status as well as I want to use it at the line item level, okay? So if we go a little bit deeper here, um, I'm just gonna randomly pick a couple here to look at. This one is a work in process, but it's also related to the line item and to the um, um, you know use of the time clock. So if we come down, I'm, I'm just trying to find some that are, there's pending, there was the, all the estimates. I don't see any, but it, it, you'll find that many of these will be a whip and built combination. So as it goes through some of the things that I'll show you in, in a bit, um, as it begins that, that progression in, in work in process, it's going to inch along to different pieces and it's going to come to the point where it's where you're done with it. Okay, so that's that would be a, a situation where it might be it might a station might pertain both to whip and perhaps to build. Then you go a little bit further, and you'll find that the, some of the stations might pertain to build, but also to sale. So you, there are different combinations of those. Um, you know, that, um, you know, to kind of help you work through. So again, just to repeat myself, statuses and stations help you manage the workflow. Talk about it as the life cycle from beginning to end. But as you walk through that life cycle, that you've got incremental steps and all of that process is managed then, um, you know, by the by the use of the statuses and stations. And I think I've re said it, but I'll repeat it. You can do that at the order level only. If you want to just work a, a an order through that production process as a complete order, or you can do it at the line item level. So each individual line item is kind of trucking its way through the production process. Now, I would suggest that perhaps if you're a relatively small shop with just two or three people in the production process that, that are involved with that, it might be acceptable to consider order level uh, management of the workflow. But if you get too much larger than that, then you're gonna have too many people involved in the puzzle doing different tasks and then it's likely that you're going to want to and need to manage things uh, at a more detail level which would imply which would imply doing that um, um, at the line item level now 
I'm going to, in column two, I can stations, think of the highest level. I might, you might catch my referring to it as the primary station. Better term is at the department level. In other words, it's the highest level of a, um, of a, of a station. Then you can have what is referred to level. So it might be a station within a primary or a department station, and you can actually go two levels deep at the sub level. So you could have the, the department, sub level one, and sub level two. And I've, I've got a little diagram that, I'll, that will be a handout that, uh, I'll, that will illustrate that. So you can create a department, and if you're gonna create a department, you basically just give it its name. If, you're, if it's involved with orders, then you would put a check mark here. It's gonna assume that you want it to apply to all three. So you would pick the one or the two um, that you wanna to pertain to, maybe both of them. Then you, if, it, if it's an order level, it's not gonna be an estimate level. So you can't, those two really don't combine with each other. If you're gonna use it at the line item level, you would choose one of the two. If you want it to be accessible on the time clock, that's what this is for. If you want it to be a, a usable in, uh, uh, as a, on the production control app, which will, uh, or cloud app, which we'll talk about in more detail on Thursday. You can reuse the reconfigure here in column two to kind of rearrange these if you need to. These gray ones, right now it's showing all of the stations, both for, uh, both for estimates and orders. If you don't wanna see all of them, then you can choose the Come on. All right. That's because I'm in the, now I can do it. So you can start a new one, start a sub level. Start a sub level is a little bit different, but looks very, very much like the uh, department level. You're gonna give it its, its name. The full name up here is, you're, you're gonna see that get con con concatenated across. So if you got a, just two levels, you're gonna see what it is associated with, the department that it's associated with, and any sub-level that it might be associated with. So you'll see this grow as you, as you go across. So you put in the, the sub-level name, then make the same choices that you did at the department level. You can re rearrange these, as I said, then you can look at, I only want to see estimate stations. I only want to look at order stations. I only want to look at those that are involved with the time clock, okay? So if we go back up to, uh, let's just leave this at the estimate level for a second. Now you can look at the, um, at the stations, the departments within that choice here. So pending, if we did order level, now you're gonna see the, the, the various uh, uh, departments within here. That's what this is for. And then down at the very, very bottom, if you want to show uh, some stations that uh, you are no longer using, then you can just put a check mark here in all of the stations that uh, have ever been created will be shown. And if I were to do that on my system here, um, I've played around quite a bit from um, you know, from what was initially in this particular system, 
you know, to uh, to the way I would choose to use it if I had it in my own in my own shop. Um, hang on a second, I would kind of get myself caught up here. Okay. I'm going to pause here to see if we have any questions, and then I'm going to start introducing uh, um, a little bit more specifics, in, including making reference to uh, um, some of the uh, handouts that, I'm, that we'll be talking about today. Any questions at this point? No questions, Paul. All righty. Well, the first handout <clears throat> that not available on the page right now but Linda as I said well we'll send it to you this is intended as a kind of a graphical uh, illustration of workflow of workflow and in as we look at it how it um, pertains to orders and how it pertains to estimates how it pertains to line items so I didn't illustrate this for, for estimate, but I think you will be able to kind of visualize it. For But for orders, you're gonna get the request for an order. You're gonna produce that order. It may consist of one or more line items. It's gonna continue in that pro, uh, proce a process of production. It's gonna go through the a process, come back. It's gonna follow through a different process, come back continue in that circle until all of the line items are completed and then it's going to come down here and uh, it's it's delivered okay so some of the things to consider are how many orders do you receive on average in a day how are you going to handle the scheduling of new orders and mix that in with orders that are uh, that have been already in the queue and are still and they're still chunking along. Uh, what kind of production workflow process do you, what do you need? How is that going to fit with the statuses and stations? Um, and then how many are going to go out the door? Okay, each day on on average. So this is is somewhat it, it's it's really very simple in in concept. But the concept that we're trying to convey is that you got new stuff coming in the pipeline, and hopefully you got stuff going out the pipeline. But it's a continuous loop. Now, obviously, you're going to have days when um, you have very little coming in, but a lot going, out. and then you're going to see the flip of that, where you have a lot coming in, and you're still keeping that pipeline relatively full. Um, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that the, at the WIP, at the status level for WIP built and sale, you got orders and line items that are in here. They're going to progress to the built side, and then they're going to progress to the sale side. That's what we're trying to illustrate. And then finally, this is the concept of you got department level stations, the dark blue. You got sub level stations, sub level one stations, and you can have sub level two stations. And some of the comments that, that how these, uh, uh, just things that you might want to be aware of, of uh, in this regard. So that's the first handout, and that's not posted. The one that is posted on, on the, uh, would down, uh, you know, can you can download on your own is taking this a bit deeper. And here, we're looking at the estimates. Uh, I'm gonna move this out of the way so I can see it a little bit better. Here, we're talking about estimates. If you remember at the very beginning of our discussion today, you get a request for a quote. You begin working on that quote, create the estimate. It's now in a pending state. These in red are the stations. And this is, it, if I were doing this, I would try to get an assessment of how cold or hot do I think that estimate might be. And if I don't have a great deal of confidence that it may uh, end up turning into an order, 
I would probably label it in the in the cold queue. And then it's either going to be in queue, it's going to be in progress, meaning that it's under the estimate is underway, getting worked on. It might be hot and it, you got the same concept. It's either in queue, what which is the beginning of it, and then it progresses uh to the uh, to in progress. Then it's going to move over. And while it's in progress, uh, you might have to, to say that, hey, I'm waiting for artwork from that customer. I can't really go any further with the creation of the estimate without having some, some artwork made available. Or I simply expect it that's going to close this week or close next week. And then hopefully, the fifth and final step, so to speak, in a life of an estimate is that it's going to get converted. And the way the system works, whatever the last station was and anything pre, you know, before, that's going to be retained as the station for the converted estimate. And then these are the two that I alluded to where you simply uh, were gonna mark it void based on our discretion. And we're gonna mark it as a reason for that is, a, is the station that was lost to a competitor. We couldn't get the customer to respond. Uh, we got a sense that the project or the price was too high or they just simply decided not to do it. So again, these are reasons, but they're treated as stations you know, within control. And similarly, you got the somewhat the same kind of concept, um, you know, for the things that you're going to mark as lost. Now, the line, kind of pay attention to the lines because uh, it's a, we're going from left to right here. And then if it's converted, then this line is bringing it down to the beginning of the order life okay so Paul, let's start yeah your screen is your screen is still showing the um the dashboard oh rats um Why isn't that allowing me to pick it? Linda, I'm going to select the main screen. Okay. Because it's not allowing me to uh, pick just the uh, Excel thing. Okay. I apologize, folks. Here we're going across from left to right for the estimates. Converted is going to bring it down into here, but you also have estimate or orders that are not going to be um, based on creating an estimate. So that's what I'm talking about here. Order step one, bringing the, uh, it across, and then getting it into the um, you know into the web station. Now here's where I alluded to, uh, uh, and you'll see that I've created. Um, um, departments. Th this one I referred to is it, it were, were before the production is actually begun. Okay, so that's the pre-production, and then we're said that it's um, in design, but it might that we've got it on hold, or it might be that we're that it's been approved, or we're waiting for it to be approved, and we're waiting for it to be completed. Once it's been completed. The concept would be that it flows down into the this next step down here below, and then you get it in here. It's still in WIP, but you're 
doing some scheduling. It's in queue to be scheduled. It is scheduled, and that scheduling is complete. And then it would progress over that it might have to go to uh, printing. And this represents more of the production side of things. And this list could be considerably longer than what I'm showing here. I've only illustrated where you're doing printing and lamination. You bring it into the queue, it gets scheduled, the work is in progress, boom, it gets completed. Then it may have to progress down to, uh, you know, to uh, um, some vinyl work, some screen printing work, fabrication work, and perhaps others before it comes over to this level eight or step eight, where it's still in WIP, but now we're beginning to do some final uh, finishing work. It might be that you're uh, assembling stuff. Um, there, and again, there may be multiple ones here. This is just the very high level, but this is the finishing side. Then it's going to go through the QA side, make sure that everything's cool. You may have to void a line item or you may have to void an order, the whole order. Now we're working our way down into the built side of things. And there may be some services that have to be um, performed. There may have to be some line, uh, some installation stuff that has to be performed. And again, we're coming from left to right here. And you might have some packaging things that need to be taken care of if you're going to ship it. And then it comes down, if it's going to be shipped, it's going to be that it's in queue, it's in the delivery cycle, it's going to be picked up. Then it's going to work its way over here to the finished, um, the finished side where it is delivered, it has been picked up, it has been shipped, and then boom, it's done. So the, the intent here is to, to sh help you visually see what the um, flow might look like, what kind of department level stations you might need, what kind of sub-level stations you might need for your particular, for your particular business. And I'm going to minimize that one and bring up uh, this one. I show this not because it's good or bad or indifferent, but it shows the relationship of statuses and stations. This is geared to orders at the whip level, at the built whip built and at the sale level. So you can see that this particular one right here, pre-production design, that it's completed. It pertains to built and, and sale but not to the work in process. And then these over here are where that particular station can be used. It can be used at the order level, can be used at the line item level, it can be used for the time clock or the production cloud. So again, coming down the, the line here, uh, and kind of how these work in, in combination with each other. And then the last one, uh, We've already looked at that one. This is the one that I want. I'm going to close that. <clears throat> this is something that you might find helpful in the concept here. This is just of the clients that I've worked with over you know, several years, the different uh, sales volumes that they have is represented up here. And this shows what their sales averages have been, number of orders that they process in a year, how many people in the production side of things, how many production related devices do they have. The green is intended for you to plug in your own numbers um, and the number of orders and, and stuff like that. And then in the blue, it'll kind of give you a flavor of how many orders you have flowing through in a day and in these other two 
So this, I'm, it's a, going to be available to you to use. You can use it if, um, you know, to, to, to suit your preferences. All right, now, I'm kind of, I'm gonna just get my bearings here. Um, I've talked about that. We've talked about the orders. Okay, this is a good stopping point to see if we have any questions before I move on to the next uh, next top main topic. No questions, Paul. All right. <clears throat> the next thing, uh, next broad topic is um, understanding how estimates and orders affect um, or impact your finance, the financial side of things. Um, very simply, estimates have no financial impact whatsoever, zero. You can't apply a payment, you can't avoid a payment, they have no financial impact. Obviously, orders do. And then before talking about the order side, I found over the years that I would frequently run into a customer that wanted an estimate, but they wanted some design work done before they would make a commitment. So it was always a dilemma on how to treat that. Because obviously, well, you may agree that if they proceeded, proceeded with the order, that you wouldn't charge for the design work. But the real world is that sometimes you'll have customers that will say, I want a quote of this and I want you to design this, and then we'll decide whether or not we're going to go forward and may elect not to. Now, how do you recoup or how do you handle that kind of situation as far as getting reimbursed for that design work that you did that then they decided not to move forward? thought that I had, kind of that I for, followed on an informal basis, I created an estimate for the design side. I created an estimate that had the whole thing. If they wanted the design side, that was converted to an order. And I expected payment for that order, even if they said no on the project unless I had agreed to waive the order or the, the design if they went forward. So we created an, an order for the design side. I expected payment for that. If they paid it and the, they decided to move forward, then we could compensate in the full order for the fact that the design work had already been done, okay? So just don't lose sight of, of that, that the game that some customers uh, play. So we kind of embraced a policy that we were going to, if they wanted the design, we're gonna create an estimate, we're gonna create that order uh, for that work, design work. And if they decided not to move forward, at least we had a better shot of getting reimbursed you know, for the work that we performed. Just, um, a tidbit, whatever it's worth, might not be worth much, but that's how we handle that kind of a situation. Now, when we get into orders, the financial impact um, progresses from none to full, okay? So an order that has got a status of whip or built has no financial impact unless a payment has been received. So if, they, if you create an order and they've not made a deposit, at that stage, there's no financial impact to the income statement, there's no financial impact to the, uh, you know, to the balance sheet. 
if they have made a full or partial payment during the, the period of time that it's in the WIP or build, then there is financial impact and that of impacts the balance sheet for the payment money that you received, but it offsets is offset on the liability side as a customer deposit. So you got the money, you took it to the bank, but you have a liability on the balance sheet side for the value of that payment. And that liability is going to remain until you have delivered the order to the customer. So when you get down into the, um, where it has become a sale, then you have transferred ownership of the entire order from you to the customer, to the client. And at that point, any liability that existed for the, uh, for the deposit gets reversed and all of the income for the different sales items, the different kinds of things that you produced, the P&L or the income statement gets in, uh, gets updated to reflect the di actual distribution of the sales. And then back on the liability side, any sales tax liability gets triggered. So the financial side of an order is none unless there's a payment that's been received while it's in WIP or built. You got a liability and an asset. If it's been a partial payment, then full uh, transfer of ownership and full financial impact is triggered once that order is becomes a sale. Now let's kind of wind, start to wind things down. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to flip over to control again. Um, now you should be seeing the remote desktop, Linda, right? We're seeing okay. your control. Uh, okay, good. So if we look at Explore and do Explore order or estimates, I'm sorry, I can look at what is impending as well as these other statuses. So if I'm looking at pending, and then we'll just do everything just to make sure that we're seeing it all. Now we're seeing the status and we're seeing the station. You can see that a lot of these, the vast majority, um, for just the illustration work that I've done, I've not really paid attention to the stations, but here are the stations. Now, if we're gonna change this one, so what we're saying here is that it's in pending. Here's where you see the concatenated names are coming across. So if I do a right mouse click and say, I wanna change the station within pending, this is the first sub level, and then to the second sub level. And here's where I'm just simply said that it's cold. I don't really know that much about it, but I think it's cold. So now that station has been changed. And it's a very, it's literally an identical um, process at the order level. <coughs> um, Looking at WIP, here if this one, uh, the, it's in fabrication. If I were following some of the pattern that I would do, I would take that one and say, I'm gonna change the station and it's in um, finishing and it's ready to go through the finishing steps. This might be that the next one would become that it's scheduled, next one is it's been completed and then down it would go out of the uh, of the of the cycle very very simple 
Um, I'm going to go back to estimates real quick. 586. Okay, I did that one. Let's look at 585. Um, I want to change this one to um, converted. Um, so I'm going to change the state, the status. Well, actually, I'm just going to choose convert which in effect is changing the status. I'm going to change the, um, uh, this is just old stuff. Yes, I want it to convert. Um, it's okay to convert it. This one might have um, variations. So if we see another little message, um, no, it didn't have um, stations. So now it has become an order, number 1088, and it's in work in process. So that's the view of this now at the order level. If we go back and look at the estimate, it now has changed to converted, and the station uh, remained unchanged from what it was previously. Throat's getting dry. Um, to change one to lost, um, let's just tick, pick, um, I'm gonna pick this one. So if I was gonna mark it as lost or voided, either one, no process is the same. So here I'm gonna do a void, here I do a, a, a lost. Let's just do a lost. And are you sure you want to mark this? Yes, I am. And ignore that. This is the reason. These are the reasons that I've defined for myself. And again, these are gonna be treated as the station. So now it's lost and the station is that it was lost to a competitor. To do avoided would be absolutely identical, identical steps. Um, order, I'm gonna go back now to order, the order side of things. And we're gonna look at this in two different ways here in just a second. Um, here is the order level. So we're seeing the the whip and the um, um, and the stations for for stuff that's in whip. Um, I'm going to take this one and just do a right mouse click. I'm going to change the status. I want to change it to built. I want to change it that it's going into pre-production. And now it's it's moved out of WIP into the some of the pre-production steps that I might have uh, might have created. Um, so the statuses, as you can see, are the the five, the primary ones being WIP, built, sale, and closed. Um, One thing that is interesting that kind of has surprised me is that you cannot void an order from Explorer. So if you want to void this particular order, you would have to open it, <coughs> excuse me, and then the action toolbar market is voided. And if we were going to do that, uh, the reason is. Uh, They've canceled it. And now it's voided. If we go back and look at Explore for 1083, it's now voided. But notice that it did not change the, the station, okay? 
So if I were to do that, and I can't change the station uh, here for, for the voiding. Now you can also um, change the station over here. No, that's activities. Wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Forget what I'm saying. Okay. Um, the last thing that I want to show you is how this, what this looks like for managing the stations and the statuses if you're working at the line item level. So I'm now viewing line items. <clears throat> so I'm seeing, <clears throat> excuse me, the column shows the, <clears throat> the order and the item number. So that represents line item one, line item two, um, different order, line item one, uh, a child, line item. <clears throat> and notice that the status, and let's look at um, order I only wanted to look at whip and build. So now I'm only seeing the items that are in whip or built. And here's the item, the line item number. So if I want to change this line item, change the station, you do it the same way that you did at the order level by just simply saying, I'm going to change the station um, in her status. Am I missing? I don't understand why I'm not moving that, able to move it to a whip. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, um, I could change the station to uh, Move it to finish to finishing, and then it's in queue. And now that line item one is in um, is in uh, queue. Uh, Lynn, do you know what off the top of your head why I can't change the status over that line item? It might be your security rights. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to explore that. But you should be able to, uh, the whole concept would be that you could change the station and or the status uh, at the line item level as well as the uh, is the order level. So I, I may look at that a little bit and see if I can get an answer for, for, for Thursday. Uh, uh, wait a second, it's line item options. Ch check that, see um, fourth one down on that list. When you right clicked fourth one down or fourth one from the bottom line item options i think it's uh, no yeah. okay <laughs> then it's gotta take, be take, it's gotta yeah. be your um security right yeah i'll i'll look at that over the, before thursday and i'm just looking at one last thing here before we That covers the material for today. Uh, I've got through all of my items. Let's, hopefully we'll have some questions. Uh, uh, you've been kind of quiet. Any, any questions? Paul, I think I know why you can't change the status. You're viewing okay. by line item. You need to view by order. Because the whole order has to change the status, not just the line item. 
I don't understand that, but what if you're doing partial deliveries? Uh... If you're doing partial deliveries of a line item, um, shouldn't you be no. able to change the status of that of that line? I think you have to change the whole thing. Uh, I'd have to research that. I'm not sure. Yeah, this, this I'll just look at it <laughs> between now and Thursday. Okay. Because the whole the whole notion to me was that you're taking these through a line item at a time and they're going to flow through that flow um at a different but i pace. think the status it, you could have a built status um i don't know let's let's look at it offline and, yeah, and come back on thursday pick pick one here just station if you view order if you try view order, I, I'm pretty sure that's what's causing the problem. If you view order, you can change the status. Yeah, very much so, yes. So I think the whole order has to change. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm still perplexed on that because of partial deliveries. Um, we'll figure it out. Any questions? Any questions? And again, Linda will the one um, the one uh, handout you can download, um, and Linda for those on the uh, webinar today will uh, email the other the other handouts. Just as nothing more than just FYI for you. Yes. If there aren't any questions, thanks everybody for joining us today and. Uh, we we'll can resume again on Thursday at the same time. All right. Thank you, everyone. Take care.